welcome to this ninth episode in the series of how to build a mutual fund portfolio. In the last two episodes, we saw how the taxation works on short term capital gains and long term capital gains from debt mutual funds. In this episode, I'm going to talk about taxation on short term capital gains from equity mutual funds. Let's get to it then. As most of us have fixed deposits, let's quickly look at the taxation on fixed deposits and then use it to compare the taxation on equity mutual funds. So as we know, the tax on fixed deposits is charged as per the income slab that we are at. So interest is added back to the income and then taxed as per that slab. Let's look at this with an example. If our annual income is 10 lakhs and if we earn 1 lakh from interest on fixed deposits, our annual income is considered as 11 lakhs. And so we are taxed at that bracket. Uh, is there an, a TDS component in fixed deposits? Yes, there is. TDS is nothing but the tax deducted at source. Now in a fixed deposit, deduction is made every year when the interest is earned. For example, if an FD is booked for four years and fetches an interest of rupees 45,000 per annum, so instead of giving the principal plus interest minus TDS at the end of four years when you redeem the FD, instead of that every year the 4000 rupees that is 10% of TDS will be deducted for four years. So irrespective of whether you use the money or not, your tax is going to be deducted. In an equity fund, there are two types of taxations. That is one is when you redeem before one year and one is when you redeem after one year. When you redeem before one year, those gains are classified as short term capital gains. And capital gain is defined as a profit you get when selling an asset or an investment. So now this short term capital gains is taxed at 15% flat. That means that it, unlike FD where your, in, your interest was added back to your income here, whatever gain you make, the tax on that is calculated separately and added to the total tax liability. Here there is no application of TDS. That means you will get the full amount. Let's look at income received in one year fixed deposit versus an equity fund. So in a fixed deposit, if I invest 9 lakh rupees and at the end of one year, I earn 5% on that, that is 45,000 rupees. TDS will be deducted, that is 4,500 will be deducted and I will get my principal 9 lakhs plus 45,000 interest earned minus 4,500. So that is 40,500. So totally I will get back. 9,40,500 rupees. In an equity fund, if I had invested the same 9 lakhs and let us assume that my return is only 5%, then I will get the entire amount back when I redeem it after one year. That is 9 lakh plus 45,000 because there is no TDS on this. So the amount to be taxed in the FD would be the interest that I earned. Now when I add that back to my income and assuming I am at the highest bracket that is 30%, I'll be charged 13,500 as tax. And so my return from the FD post tax becomes 31,500. Of course, TDS I've already paid of 4,500. So the uh, remaining needs to be paid up as further tax. If I'm at the lowest income bracket uh, or the lower income bracket, then my tax will be charged at 10%. So 45,000 on that 10% is 4,500 and my returns after tax become 40,500. In an equity fund, in the same example, again, 45,000 is the amount to be taxed. As I mentioned earlier, it's a flat 15% tax. So here the return, the, the tax is 6,750. So returns after tax is much better. It's 38,250. Even if I'm at the lowest, lower income bracket, it doesn't matter. My tax is calculated separately on my gain from the equity fund. So the taxation remains the same, 6,750, and my returns after tax is 38,250. Now this gives an impression that people who are currently at a lower income slab may not benefit by buying an, uh, or investing into an equity fund. But that's not true. Uh, ideally, equity funds should be held for longer periods, that is more than five years at least, but then they do deliver uh, a higher uh, rate of return 
and we should also exit when we get a higher rate of return that is 10 percent or higher uh, so when you hold for a longer period the compounding effect starts to kick in and returns are not very volatile the longer term taxation is also favorable as we'll see in the next episode so i hope this video helped you to understand the effect of taxation on short term capital gains from equity mutual funds if you have any queries please do leave a comment or you can reach out to me at the touch points that i've given at the end of the video and i'll be happy to get back to you for more such videos do like and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching <laughs>